just uh, for those who, who want to watch in that way as well. Um, as I'm, th as I'm uh, talking about this too, just a, a friendly reminder, as we're, especially if you're inside here with us today, uh, make sure that we uh, keep our masks on and, and practice social distancing as we're indoors. Uh, also, uh, just want to mention that uh, on September 13th, Sunday, September 13th, uh, that'll be uh, at 6.30 in the evening, we're going to be having a, an outdoor communion service. It'll be the first time we're able to com celebrate communion together for some time now, uh, but we, uh, we're going to be doing that in a way that will uh, uh, you know, just hopefully be a real blessing to, to everybody who's able to come and also uh, be able to practice all the social distancing that we're trying to do as well. But it is great to see everybody. I'm going to ask now that we join together in a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you uh, for you are good and we know you are holy. And we thank you, God, that we can be here together today, Lord, to worship you and to glorify your name. Lord, we pray that even as we are here today, that we may know the power of your presence. I pray, Father, that we may know what it means, Lord, to be uh, in your presence this morning. Lord, that we would not forget, Lord, the joy of, of what it means to come together as a family of believers. I thank you for all who are here this morning, for those who are uh, joining us outdoors, for those who are online at home, and I pray for, their, for your blessing, God, to be upon them. Uh, Lord, I pray that we may know the power of your presence. Lord, for those who are ill and those who are sick, and even as I've uh, found out more, Lord, throughout this week of my friends and, and, and people in our church, Lord, who are struggling, people outside of our church, Lord, we pray for your protection upon them and their families. We pray for your healing hand to be upon them. We pray that they may be strengthened, God, even in the moments now, and that they may know, God, what it means to live, God, in your joy, in peace, in presence, in healing uh, right now, Lord. Lord, for those who are traveling, I know uh, many going on vacations, I pray for safety uh, for them as well. Uh, Lord, I thank you for those who are joining us uh, in, even in remote places, Lord, as well, and just ask God for them to know the power of your presence uh, right now. But Lord, we do come together. We come together worshiping and praising your name. We come together praying to you, uh, even as you've taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Jamie. I just want to, as we're standing together, I just want to add to what he said about the technology. You know, we pray for a lot of things. And uh, in my line of work with computers, I pray about things, too, that I cannot solve. And we, uh, we're having a very difficult time. And... And thank God that we got the uh, audio working so that we could be back online for people that can't be here. Could we stand together and sing great things?
You've been faithful through every storm. You've been faithful forevermore. You have done great things. And I know you will do it again. For your promise is yes and amen. You will do great things. God, you do great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom. Awaken to life, O oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, O oh, God, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all, Hallelujah, God, unshakable. You conquered the grave, you free every captive, and break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive, oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. Yours is 
is the victory. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever. He is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. And nothing formed against me shall stand. You hold the whole world in your hands. I'm holding on to your promise. is always by my side the one who reigns forever he is a friend of mine the god of angel armies is always by my side i know who goes before me i know who stands behind the god of angel armies is always by my side the one who reigns forever he is a friend of mine the god of angel armies is always by my side the god of angel armies is always by my side amen hallelujah is right Praise the Lord. He is there. Hmm. Let us pray if we could together. Out of the depths, I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear my, my voice. voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If, if you, you, O Lord, Lord should, should mark, mark inequities, Lord, who, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait, wait for, for the Lord. Lord. My, my soul, soul waits, and, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all iniquities. Amen. That's from Psalm 130. The assurance of pardon. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the 
ten of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am, it's who I am. Oh, and I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Good Father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, and you're a good, good Father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Oh, this love so undeniable, I, I can hardly speak. It's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am, it's who I am. Thank God. You may be seated this time. Amen. You know what? Let us recite together the Apostles' Creed even while you're sitting. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, was born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. I love that line, and the resurrection of the body. That's the, we have the life today, and we will have a resurrected body. Could we pray together? Father, we thank you so much for 
our time together this morning. And Lord, we face many challenges in so many pl different places. And we thank you, Lord, though, that you have brought us to this place at this time as your people. And Lord, I, I do want to pray for churches uh, all over the world that are, that are having difficulties uh, getting their services together, people coming together. We just pray, Father, that you would provide, that you would intervene, that you would give people strength and patience, uh, help us to have love for one another, and, and obey you and do things in your ways. Lord, as we give this morning and as we give at home and as we give online, all the different ways you provided, we, we, we give in honor of you. We give back to you, Lord, because you've given us the kingdom of God. So, Lord, we pray as we hear your message, please, once again, we ask, give us hearts and ears to hear that we might respond uh, to your word that you've given uh, Pastor Jamie. We pray all these things in your precious name. Amen. Is it working? Oh, it's working now. Can somebody make sure that the... Hold on. You know, last week when our YouTube went out, we went Facebook Live, and we noticed a lot of people actually joined us on that, so that's why uh, that uh, whatever I just had to adjust is uh, with a cell phone. But anyway, one thing is for sure, uh, we've all had to learn how to be flexible through all of these things, haven't we? And uh, what a blessing it is to be here together to, with you all this morning. And even as our singing reminded us, uh, there is only one who is perfect, and that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he's called us into that perfection. And that's something that we have an incredible hope for as we, uh, as we move forward in, in life and ministry and, and just being together as a church. So what a blessing it is to, to be here together today. I'm going to ask that we join together in a word of prayer as we go into this time of our service of looking into his word. Lord, I thank you for uh, your love. I thank you, God, that we come together now in a place where we can worship you, but also, Lord, that we can look into the truth of your word. Uh, Lord, how you have worked throughout history, how you have done amazing things, and Lord, even how you do amazing things today. So, Lord, I pray you would build our faith. I pray, Father, for the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit this morning as we worship together, and as, Lord, as we continue on in this time together. Amen. You know, I'm sure we've all uh, seen the movies uh, or television shows or whatever they are, but somebody, this is typically what ends up happening, uh, you know, during a chase. You know, somebody is running through the streets of a city. They're being chased down by some sort of a villain. And as they're trying to get away, I don't know why, but they always turn down an alley. Have you ever noticed that? They, get, they, they run into the alley, and, all the, and, and there's no way out. I mean, there's, a, there's either a chain link fence that has completely uh, you know, got the locks on it, and there's you know, bob wire or concertina wire on the top, and there's just no getting away or getting out of this situation. And they stop, and they turn around, and there the villain just stops maybe about 20, 30 feet away, kind of the evil grimace on his, on his face, looking at the person that, you know, that they're about to commit a crime. And, and that's where we're left with this situation and this feeling like, oh no, there's nowhere to turn. Well, that's kind of where the Israelites find themselves in this particular story as we're continuing on with our Sunday school uh, series where we're looking at the stories of the Old Testament, the stories that uh, you may have heard if you went to Sunday school when you were a child, or maybe some really didn't get that opportunity. And so they didn't get the opportunity to many times hear these particular stories. Now this one, however, 
is one that has been widely publicized, has been uh, put into film by Cecil B. DeMille. Uh, it has been uh, uh, put together, I think Disney put something out, Prince of Egypt. Uh, so this one is a little bit more uh, well known, and you probably know, well, I gave it away, I said Prince of Egypt. We're going to be talking about Moses today. And the particular part of the story we're going to be talking about is the crossing of the Red Sea. But I'm going to read to you from chapter 14, and what you're going to see is, is that this is that situation of running down the alley and thinking there's absolutely no way out is exactly where the Israelites find themselves in this story. So Exodus chapter 14, starting with the first verse, uh, the Israelites have left Egypt. The plagues have come. Uh, Pharaoh and he said, just go, leave. They left uh, with all kinds of, of, uh, of riches that were given to them. And they find themselves out uh, in, in, into a place where God is taking them. And God strategically puts them where they're going to be for a strategic purpose. And that purpose is we're going to find. I want you to listen for it as we read uh, through the, his word. Genesis act, uh, chapter 14. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to turn back and encamp near pi uh, near the Migdal, and the city, uh, oh, and the sea. They are to encamp by the sea directly opposite of Baal Zephon. Pharaoh will think the Israelites are wandering around the land in confusion, hemmed in by the desert. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. But I will gain glory for myself through Pharaoh and all his army, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So the Israelites did this. Well, there's the, the purpose of why God is doing it. Is why? So that his glory would be revealed. The Egyptians would know who he is, but also his people. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about them and said, What have we done? We have let the Israelites go and have lost their services. So he and his chariot made ready and took the army with him. He took 600 of his best chariots, along with all the other chariots of Egypt, with, off with officers over all of them. The Lord had hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, so that he pursued the Israelites, who were marching out boldly. The Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, horsemen and troops, pursued the Israelites and overtook them as they camped by the sea near pi Hiraroth opposite Baal Zephon. As Pharaoh, as Pharaoh approached the Israelites, or, or as, as Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Now we're going to stop there for a moment. And I want us to look at a couple of things. Again, this, this God, I want to say, they are exactly where God wants them to be. This is no mistake. Uh, God has positioned them there. And it doesn't make sense to them. It doesn't really make sense to the Egyptians. The Egyptians think they're just confused and wandering around, and they've sort of ended up there. But what we see is that God had a purpose in them being there, and it's expressed that this is God's purpose, his place for them. Because this is where God is going to show his power. This is where God is going to show his deliverance to his people. But look at how the Israelites react. Uh, let me reread verse 10. It says, As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and, there, and, and when they saw the Egyptians marching after them, it says they were terrified, and they cried out to the Lord. It says that they were terrified. So, can somebody fix that? I'm, I'll fix it. Did it go out? We 
we up? Okay. Sorry, the Facebook uh, Live people just uh, hit the ground. Sorry for you all out there. I hope they didn't hurt. Um, where was I? Oh, okay. So the Israelites are, are there and they're reacting. They're scared. Um, and here's the thing. Here's the point I want to make here. Even though they are free, okay, they have been freed from Egypt. They still have the mindset of servants, of slaves. They have lived under the oppression of Egypt for 400 years to the point where this is all that they have known and they are still operating and acting in that. They're looking back to when they were in Egypt and they face a little bit of trouble. And so what are they, what's the first thing that comes to their mind is they said, listen, we told you to leave us alone. Things were okay. At least we had food. At least we were going to survive. I mean, if we're going to die, at least we could have had a grave in Egypt. But they have forgotten that they are free. They're only living in the familiar. And, they're in, and in doing that, they're in danger of living as those who are still enslaved, even though they are free. And I think about what happens to us as believers in Jesus Christ as well. We are free. We have been made free by Christ. We are those who have, who the, the power of sin and death no longer is our master. And yet every time we say yes to that, every time we, we get to that place where it begins to control us because that's what we know, that's what we're comfortable with, we're allowing it mastery over us. Uh, Paul puts it this way, if we turn over to Romans chapter 6, Paul is talking about this uh, being dead to sin and being alive in Christ. And he says this, he says, What's, what then shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? He says, by no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone to obey him as slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching to which you were entrusted. You have been set free from sin and become slaves to righteousness. See, God has called us as his people in a, to a new place, a new destination, a new direction, to live as those who are free, to live in his blessing, to live in his glory, to experience it for ourselves. The problem is, it just as what happened with the, with the Israelites, is when fear begins to come into our life, it, 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 it tends to push us back into that slave mentality. And we are called to live beyond that and more than that. So what do we do for ourselves and what is it that Moses called the people of Israel to? Now this is great because one of the things we're going to see is, is here as we read this is that the presence of God is with his people. The presence, if you belong to Jesus Christ, you're, you are in the presence of God because God is in you, and he lives in you. So looking at uh, verse 13 of chapter 14 and reading on, and this is Moses' answer to the people. He says, do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance of, that the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the, Isra uh, tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots, through his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went, and, and went behind them. The pillar of a cloud also moved uh, from in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt 
and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to one side and light to the other side. So neither went near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all night the Lord drove, back, drove the sea back with a strong east wind, turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them, and all of Pharaoh's horses and chariot horse, chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud and, and the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He made the wheels of their chariots come off so that they had difficulty driving, and the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And at daybreak, the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and the horsemen. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea, not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The day of the Lord, that, that day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the great power the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses his servant. You talk about something spectacular, something pretty amazing. You know, Israel's probably looking at this army coming at them. And they were no match. I mean, this is an army with chariots and horses and men who had trained to fight. It reminds me of uh, when, maybe some of you all you know, who were alive at that time, many of you weren't, uh, but back in the 80s, uh, if you remember when uh, Grenada uh, had, had taken captive uh, some of our folks, and uh, we sent in our military. And uh, it was one of those situations where the, the, our military was quite a bit, well, more advanced, more well-trained, better equipped than what they were going to meet on the island of Grenada. Uh, I had a, uh, a friend that, that I met when I was in the Army. Uh, we were in uh, NCO school together, and he was on Grenada at the time, and he told me this story. I'm not sure exactly what, what his job was, but he told me this story of something that happened while they were on the island. Apparently, uh, when the, the Army had gotten uh, set up, his particular unit had gotten set up where they were, uh, they uh, heard a, an airplane overhead. Uh, you know what an airplane sounds like when it's flying. Well, this was a single engine kind of a plane, you know, kind of flying overhead. And apparently mounted to this airplane was a machine gun that he was firing down upon our troops. So they simply got on the radio and they said something like, you know, we need, uh, you know, we're, we're taking air fire, we need air support. And uh, within minutes, a couple of uh, jets show up from a uh, United States uh, Navy aircraft carrier and uh, this fellow said, you looked up to the sky, and all you could hear was, this, thing is, this plane's trying to turn around, go the other direction. Uh, but he's completely outmatched. And he, couldn't, he didn't stand any hope of survival. And you can imagine what was probably going on in the heart of that pilot. Panic. I've got, I don't know what they were, F-14s or A-6 intruders that were coming after him, but if I'm in a little airplane and I see jets coming at me, I'm not going to be too happy. Well, here the Israelites are. They're out there. They're seeing this massive, well-trained, well-equipped army coming after them. And they're thinking, there's no hope. And fear grabs them and panic. And who steps in? Take you back to the alley. Who steps in to save the day? It's the superhero. And God comes to their rescue. 
He comes to their rescue. He is there. His presence is there. One of the things that we saw, even if you look at the previous chapter, is that God's presence never left Israel. There was always there a pillar of fire, a pillar of cloud. And in verse 19, it talks about this pillar of cloud that goes and sets the boundary. God is there to rescue them. And, the, and what does Moses say to them? Moses says to them, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance that the Lord will bring you today. Stand firm. And I think about the many situations we face in our own life, the times that we feel like we're in that alley running and all of a sudden there's a dead end and there's nowhere to turn. There's times of our life where we look around us and we're thinking, what am I going to do? Does that bring us fear? Does it bring us panic? You know, we talk about this thing called PTSD that happens to people, and it's real. And it's based on past situations. But, but what happens when we begin, the truth, begin to bring the truth that our God is present in the situation, no matter what it is that we face? You know, this particular story of Scripture is something that was etched into the minds of those who actually saw it. This is something that they would carry with them through the wilderness as they would face uh, hindrance after hindrance after hindrance. It is there that was in the minds of, of people as they would tell their children about these stories and passed down from generation to generation, spoken about, sung about. We find it in the Psalms, in Psalm 66 where we read, come and see what God has done, how awesome his work in man's behalf. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in him. He who rules forever by his power, his eyes watch the nations. Let not the rebellious rise up against him. Praise our God, O people. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Let the sound of praise of our God be heard. And as we face these types of situations in our life, what do we do? You see, if we forget what it is that God has done, if we forget what it is he's done in our life, if we begin to, to fear, panic sets in. And we need to be reminding ourselves of stories like this. We need to remind ourselves of who our God is over and over and over again. So God's presence is with his people, but not only that, we see that God alone delivers his people. Notice the words in verse 14. It's, Moses says, the Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. In other words, God does it all. God does everything in their deliverance. Israel doesn't have to lift a finger. All they need do is sit and watch and walk across dry land. God delivers them from their enemy. God sets the boundary that is not to be crossed until he allows it. And then God opens up a way of escape for them by producing a dry Red Sea. Now, the Red Sea, I don't know exactly what the depth is at that particular place in the Red Sea, but the average depth, uh, uh, I believe, of the Red Sea is somewhere around 450 meters. So let's just take that average depth, let's cut it in half, let's just say there's walls of water that are only 200 meters or 100 meters, that's 300 feet of walls. Can you imagine, uh, you know, for those of us who are sitting in a sanctuary, if we were walking through dry ground and the, the walls of water were only as high as the ceiling here? But how impressive that might be and how cool. <laughs> God does this. And it says that they walk through, the, the, uh, through walls of water. God gave them the way out. He gave them the escape. The freedom was theirs for the taking. You know, it's interesting, as we had uh, talked about before, about sometimes that when... When we say yes to sin, we're saying, you know, that those are the things that, uh, you know, many times put us back into this place of prison. Well, God, uh, Paul gave us other warnings as well using this story from Scripture. In chapter 10 of, of 1 Corinthians, 
He spoke of, of this time. He says, For I do not want you to be ignorant of the facts, brothers, that our forefathers were all under the cloud and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them. The, that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and their bodies were scattered over the desert. They were those who kept falling after, uh, and he goes on how they just kept falling and how they, they, they would do things they ought not to do. They forgot who they were. They lived once again as those who were slaves. Verse 11 says, these things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the fulfillment of the ages has come. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you do not fall. No temptation has seized you except that which is common to man, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear, but when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. Notice what Paul's saying there. He says there will always be a way out. You may be tempted. You may find yourself in a place of temptation, but God is going to provide a way out, just as God provided a way out for the Israelites. We are not to be those that live as slaves of Egypt, but to live as those who have been called by God to his glory. And to never forget our own deliverance. The deliverance of Egypt was that which was provided to them by God. I mean, excuse me, to the Israelites from Egypt was that which was given to them by God. Verse 14 again, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. The Lord will fight for you. And if we think about this and the deliverance of those that God had delivered out of the hands of the Egyptians, it is only God who fights for us that delivers us from the hand and the depths of the grave and sin itself. He did it all. He accomplished it all. When we think about who our Lord and Savior is in Jesus Christ, he accomplished everything needed for our salvation. What have we done for it? It is he who was born. It was he who came. It's he who lived out perfection. We didn't. It's he who died the death of a sinner so that we don't have to die the death of a sinner. And there was nothing that we could do but watch what the Lord was going to do as he fought for us. The Israelites crossed the Red Sea into the deliverance of God. We respond to his goodness by receiving what he gives to us as a gift. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. There was a grace displayed of God and the redemption of his people at the Red Sea. There was a glory of God that was displayed as he saved his people, as he became their salvation. And in the same way, when we respond to the call of Christ on our lives and live for him, when we, when we receive the gift of eternal life, there's a grace that is received by us and that we ourselves are welcomed into that place of glory, of love. And so how do we respond to that? Well, let me conclude, conclude by just reading verse 31. And when the Israelites saw the great power the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. So let us today, let's fear our God. Let's put our trust in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and let us come together and worship him, glorifying him for who he is. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you again for your love. We thank you for these stories that you've given to us, how you have just not left us alone, but you have kept us, Lord. You've allowed us to see yourself You've allowed us to experience what it means, Lord, to be freed from the grave, 
to no longer desire that what the grave has, Lord, to no longer look back to Egypt and its graves and those former ways of life that only bring death. But, Father, you have called us to life and life more abundantly, that we might live free, Lord Jesus, in you. And we thank you for these things. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. There was a song that came out in the, the 90s. We're going to do it now. Our church has done it many, many years ago. Stand with me. Uh, it directly relates uh, to the Bible story this morning. It's from Psalm chapter 20, verse 7, if you want to look it up later. Uh, but I pray that uh, not only is this a good story, but this is one of the best, one of the coolest stories, and it applies to our lives. And I pray that we would be excited and not take for granted that God has done great things that he will provide a way. Could we uh, stand together? Some may trust in horses. Some may trust in horses, some may trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of our God. Some may trust in horses, some may trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of our God. Sing with us. Some may trust in horses, some may trust in chariots, but we will trust name of our God. One more time. Some may trust in horses, some may trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of our God. In the name of Jesus, our salvation lies. He will hear from heaven to answer every cry. Some may trust in horses, some may trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of our God. One more time. Some may trust in horses, some may trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of our God. The blood of Jesus, sins are washed away. Sing for joy to God, our strength is better. We wait, we wait. Some may trust in horses, some may trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of our God. Some may trust in horses, some may trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of our God, we will trust, we will trust in the name of our God. One more time, we will trust in the name of our God. Amen. That's okay, you get a little Amen. excited, it's fine. And now receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon you both now and forevermore. May you go this day knowing the grace of our God. May you know that you can be one who walks this earth without fear. For we have a God who truly does fight our battles. We need only sit, see, and watch. And then enter into his goodness. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.